transparency, so we are going to be putting transparent backgrounds over our images so that we can make them darker and give them a bit of an effect. And the last one, we're going to do introduction to buttons. So our contact us page will have a send button that we are then going to format. Later in this lesson, we're going to be covering transitions. And basically, what a transition is, it is changing something from one thing to another. So as you'll see with the read more, when you click on the button, it changes from fully colored to just an outline, which is quite cool. It also lets the user know that the button click has been received and that the action is being taken. So within transitions, there are six possibilities. So there's easing, linear, ease in, ease out, ease in and out, and cubic visa or beza. Now, the best way for you to do this is let's go ahead and take what I'm going to show you in the demo, and then we'll just use all of these different effects there, and I can show you practically what they all mean, because I think showing you practically is just a bit more fun than trying to remember. Next, we've got linear gradients. Now, what a linear gradient requires you to have two, at least two different colors, because you can't you know, use a gradient on one color. Then we need them to fade seamlessly into one another, and they must have a defined angle or direction. So if you have a look at this graphic that I found, you can see how everything is fading nicely, and it's going in a straight line from the left to right, or right to left, depending. Um, but you can see that it all fades together beautifully, and there's no defined line of where one color starts and the next color begins. So we've got red, green, blue, and alpha. So we've got red, green, blue, all at zero. And then alpha is going to tell us if it does 0, 0.0, the image will be fully transparent. And if it gets to one, it will be fully visible. So you can see on the first one, we're going to 80% of it must be visible. And then the next one, we've got 50%, and that is going to be on our Contact Us page. But I will run, this, run through this with more detail when we are doing the demo. I think quite a good place to start is let's start off with the Education page, because we have briefly touched on tables before. But I'm going to show you how to take an ordinary table and turn it into something awesome. So let's go and get started. Okay, so I've gone ahead and just done the CSS link and created the education and HTML pages. And then what we're going to do is we're going to be a little bit sneaky, and we're going to go into our home and our, CS, uh, our home CSS and our home HTML so that we can get our side menu back, our hamburger menu. So we're going to come in here, and we're going to select from div down to the end of script. And we're just going to copy that and go into education, and within our body tag, we're just going to paste that in. So we went to home.html, we went from the div here, down to script, we copied that, and we pasted it in here. So let's see what this does. And remember, we've now got this mess again. So let's go and put our CSS in. So if we go to home.homecss, and we navigate down, we can see here is where we start formatting our hamburger menu, so we're going to copy this. Oh, not that far. <laughs> ah, there we go. And we're going to take this and then put it into education.css. You can leave a few lines. There we go. And let's see what this does. Remember that our hamburger is currently white. And there we go, we have got our menu back, and we can go and see Mr. Lion, and then we can go back to education. Okay, so within education, we're going to have quite a nice looking background, and we are going to have an advanced table. So, with our table, we are going to create a div class container. So we're going to come in here, under scripts, and we're going to move in. And we're going to go div class and go container. There we go. Let me just make some more room so that everyone can see what I'm doing. There we go. And then within here, we need to start 
top, table tag. And then within table, remember we have TR, which is table row. And we're going to have four lots of table data, so TD. Uh, text will go in there. Let's take this. Two, three, and four. That one decided not to cooperate. <laughs> there we go. And four. So now we're going to be learning one of Kate's tricks again. And we are going to take this. And we've got four. Yes, we've got four rows. So one, two, three. All of this needs to nicely. <laughs> there we go. Three and then four. So we've got all four here. But the one thing we have forgotten is that we need to have table heading. So go here. Go TR. And one, two, three, four. And within here, we have to then have TH, table heading. So we've got name. Then we've got, let's just populate these so it's easier. So we've got name, then qualification. Key achievements. last year. Okay, so let's just see what this does. So we've got name, qualifications, key achievements, and year. So we're going to be now populating, remember, one line per one TR. So table row and it's the data that falls within that particular line. So we can go show academy. And we can go with Professional diploma in photography. And then here we can say distinction. And that was in 2015. And let's see what happens here. Okay, so we've now populated there. And just for convenience sake, Gonna make all of these Shaw Academy. Also, why not do all your courses at Shaw Academy? <laughs> uh, there we go. And they're all gonna be professional diplomas. This one can be in Photoshop. What else can we do? Let's do web design because web design is awesome. So, go web design. And last, we can do just digital marketing. And we can be super smart and get lots of distinctions. Yay! So 2015, let's do 2016, and 2018, and 2019. There we go. And let's see how this appears. Okay, so this does not look very attractive. <laughs> it looks very dull and boring. And also, we're cutting it off there, so let's go and fix this. But before we do that, let's tidy this up. So we okay, so see how this all fits in very nicely together. We like tidy code. And let's say, so let's now go into our CSS. So we've got our side nav here. And now let's start off where we normally do, with the body. I remember the things that we already know, I'll do it quite quickly so I can have time to spend on the more complicated aspects of the lesson. So we're going to go background image, and we're going to pick an image, go to images, and I want education picture. And then, as we normally do, background repeat. We want no repeat. And we want to make sure, well, let's actually show you. Yes, 
pop in Calipica. And then all I did was just go in here and look for a grey. So I'm not going to spend too much time trying to get the same one, but you'll then just go and say, I want the RGB colours, and you'll then just take this and copy paste it in to get the colours that you want. So if you want my exact colour, we can go 255, 255, 255. And it's giving us this white. Okay. So it's a fun little experiment. And then let's carry on. And then we want our colour of our text. And that's going to be if, if, if. You'll start learning color codes as well when you get a bit of practice. And we want that to be white. So now we formatted our table heading and our table data in the same way, but we want our heading to look slightly different. So again, we can just type TH now on its own, so this will only apply to your table headings. And we can go text align, and we want that to be aligned to the left hand side of the screen. And that should be fine there for now. And then we want our T head, just table heading. And we want the background color to be a bit different here. So we're going to go background color. And we're going to pick a color. And I think we're going to use this purple color here. It's quite nice. Okay. No, 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 not the purple. I want the blue. <laughs> okay, we've got the blue here, and let's just set our font family. So font family is going to be Arial. There we go. Oopsie. So we can see, remember we're up here. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is our table heading. We're going to add a little bit of formatting there. And in order to do that, we are going to do background color. And we're going to go and custom pick the sticky note color over here, just to keep with our little color scheme we have going on. Straighten these up. And then we're going to say the font family is Arial. There we go. And font size is 20. Go. I'm just going to move this like this for now so we can see what I'm doing. And the table heading, we want to align, text align, left. Let's just see if that fixes that nicely. There we go. Okay, so the last thing we want to do is I want to get another column to highlight, well, the column to highlight now as well. And we're going to do that by going key body, table data, we'd like it to hover, and that will be B4. Okay, then we're going to go content, the position must be absolute, left is equal to zero. Right. Then we've got the top, and that's going to be minus 999 pixels. You'll see now what's going on. Bottom. This was a yes. And then background color. And we're just going to do Google that, and here is our code. Pop that code in, but we must just remember to go RGBA. And then we need to just add in our
Like, why is this colour so solid? But I don't know. There we go. Okay, so now we've got that. So I just hadn't put, put my dot in, and that's what messed me up there. <laughs> okay. So let's just see what happens if we remove any of these parts. Okay, so that is the key to getting our colour to stay. So let's see again. There we go. We were quickly just going to tidy this up a little bit. There we go. And then, ta-da! We can see a very nice looking page here. Let's go ahead and start coding our contact page. Okay, so we've got all of this here. Now, what are we going to try and do here? So uh, here we, what we're going to do is go to the script section <coughs> and then after that we're going to go and quickly put in our heading 1, although I suppose actually before we do that, let's grab our CSS so that this doesn't look so terrible. go. And remember now we've just got our, our handbag and menus a bit invisible. Okay, so contact, let's move these two together. Oh, uh, okay. Let's just close these ones. Okay, so we've got contact. Here we go. So let's go in here. Anyone one we want to be get in touch. And we can save. And there we go. So get in touch. Goodbye. <laughs> Okay, so we want to now do a form. So within form, you have to start off with form action. So we're going to go form, action, and then this is just going to be my handling form page. Because at the moment, we don't actually... You'll only learn about this in later modules, how to actually get a properly functioning form. But we're going to just give you a taste now to inspire you. Okay, so form action. And then we need a div. So we need to make a div here. And then within div, we're going to do our first label. So we're going to go there. We're going to go label. is equal to, oopsie, name, and then on the actual site we wanted to say, oopsie, we wanted to say name, there we go, and then we need to just also specify an input type, so input type is equal to text, and the ID for that is going to be name. And then name is going to be equal to, keep doing that, username. So this will, take, will generally be when you're linking it up to a database. So this would be your variable name. Your variable would hold any of the information that gets put in here. Okay, we need another div because we've got three input fields that we want to do. We've got name, and then we've got email address, so another div, and that's going to be label for email, ah, oh no, there we go, label for email, and that's going to equal email. And that's how it's going to show on the page. And then we want another input type. Input type is equal to email. And then our ID is going to be equal to email. And the name, name is equal to user underscore email. I know this all looks very terrifying. 
at this point. Let's have a look. Okay, so just name, email. And we're going to do this one more time. That's going to be slightly different because we're going to leave it. Text area so that our users can leave us messages, detailed messages, on uh, what information it is that they would like. So we're going to make another div. And within this div, we are going to go ahead and say label for message. Let's go with SM MSG. <laughs> and that's going to be your message and then that's going to be the end of that label and then we just got to do our input charts but this time it's going to be text area id is equal to msg name and name is equal to User message. Okay, so you see how your text area there has closed, and then we're just going to have a look at what this looks like. Okay, and you can see here we've got a little functionality that if you click on these this corner, so you can't change it here. But you can go like this, which is pretty cool. And I'm going to stop playing with that now. <laughs> okay, so now we need to go and make this look like something we're looking at. So let's go into our CSS. And what, is, what do I always like to do? I like to put my background images on. So let's go to body. And this one we're going to get a bit more complicated with our linear gradients. So let's go background. Background image. And that's going to be this coffee cup. There we go. Let's have a look. Gradient, 
three fun. Let's see what it does. Made it go away. There we go. See, just leaving that gap. Ruins everything. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now we've got a uh, little bit of black misting or making it a bit darker, which just makes gives it a bit of a bit of a cooler feel. Here. So let's go quickly and just make this heading stand out so we can go H1. And we want the color to be white. We want the font size to be 60. Text around can be left. And then we can add some padding to the left. So padding left can be 60. No, not 60, like a 30 percent. And the front family can be aerial. There we go. I think that looks quite nice. And now we're going to have a bit more fun and do Okay, let's get started on formatting our form. So we're going to start off by just saying form. And then we're going to say margin. Be 50 pixels. And auto. That's going to get it to the center of our page. And we want 600 pixels. And we want the width. So that's moved quite a bit, and that's not looking bad. We can always come and move this around a bit later. Then we want to set our border radius. Border radius going to be 10 pixels. And that is this little section here. Uh, 100. So border radius. And then we can just do font. Family is Arial. There we go. There we go. So you can see we can type it here now, which is pretty cool. And then all of our divs, we want to add some padding to, so we're going to go div. And we're going to put top margin, so margin top is going to be 25 pixels. And now we've got a nice gap in between each one. So now these are our labels, so name, email, and your message. So I think those need a bit of love. And let's go and say display. And we want this to be an in-line block, so that it all lines up nicely. We want the width to be, let's say, 120 pixels. We want it to align the text to the right. My brain was working faster than my hands there. Color must be white. And front size can be 20 pixels. Ta-da! That's actually looking quite a lot better. We might remove this your part later. We'll see how it goes. And then we just want to go and format our little text area. So input here. Yeah. So input comma Text area. And this is basically just going to make sure that all of our text fields have the same 
front fitting. So we're going to go front, size is going to be, what did we pick? 20, 20 pixels. And our front family is going to be the same there. And now what we want to do is set a background. So we're going to go with background. And it's going to be RGBA. And let's go and see what color I've chosen. I think this is grey. It's grey. Okay. So I've chosen this grey when I pre pre prepared the site for us so we can just go in here. And it was one eighty nine. 189, 189, and then we wanted a 30% see through, transparent. Okay, so you can see you've got your bit of transparency showing there, and I think that looks quite cool. And then let's just make sure that these all line up because it's looking quite messy at this point, so let's go with width. Can be 500 pixels, and then let's go and see if that's enough. Oh, that's too much. Let's make it 400. There we go, and we can actually do some padding. So padding left. We can make that 20 pixels. See if that's too much. I've been getting all my orders mixed up. Let's see. Okay. Okay, right. There we go. Now we've got a bit more of a gap there, which I think looks a lot better. And then we can go and put a highlighter onto when we, so when you select here. You can see it's getting this little blue, which actually looks quite nice. So I think we'll leave that blue. And you can see where you are typing. But that's actually quite an important thing. Let's change that color to white. This is why it's important to do testing and play around. There we go. So we can see now that that has been fixed. And I think your message should just be message.
class is equal to button one. And now we need an href. So we can just go href. And we can add a website. We can just make it our home page. <laughs> there we go. And ooh, our target is going to equal blank. And the relationship is going to be button, but we're going to fix you, don't worry, and we're going to go front 
weights equal to 100. I have some padding. It's going to be 50 pixels. Um, then we can do transitions. And remember, we spoke about transitions earlier, and we want to use all of them. And we want it to go over 0.5 of a second. And we want it to ease at zero seconds. So let's see what happens here. Big button. Okay, so we still need to do the hover effect for this. But that was a bit too hectic, so let's just change that. Let's make padding 10 and see if that improves slightly. Okay, but it's still looking like a very sad button. And I think we should change the color of this button as well. I think we should use the display inline block as well over here. Save that. Now it's got a bit more space. I think we need to change our text color. So let's go color is white. That's better. Then we can go and make this the same font. So where did we use our font? So we've got font family over here. Let's slip that up the top. And we want font size, then to be 20 as well. Save. Let's see. Okay, so that's looking quite good at this point. And then we can see that it takes us back to Google. So that's, that's not too bad. Let's have a look-see. So we've got Get in Touch and our little Send button. And we've got our menu as well.